Uh, welcome to the European Jenkins Doc Ops Hours on the uh, 11th of August. Uh, today we have quite a bit of an agenda, some action items that Mark can provide uh, an update for. Uh, we have our Google Summer of Code uh, participant behind in the meeting, so uh, hopefully he'll be, he'll be willing to share some updates and uh, anything new that he might have for us there. Uh, we have the September LTS, the Jenkins 2.361.1 release coming out, and we have the changelog upgrade guide and a blog post to make for it. Um, there are a lot of changes, so we have to address all those and make sure it's very clear. Uh, there is an item on improving the search results for Jenkins.io uh, that Mark will be able to speak to a little bit more, uh, but basically improving the results in ways that searches performed in Jenkins. Uh, the next LTS baseline, again, the one that's going to be coming out in September, will require Java 11. Uh, so that's another big piece of it that we'll have to make sure our users are aware of. Uh, that's going to co come along with a blog post, uh, the upgrade guide, the change log itself. Uh, we're also going to, so, uh, Java 17 support is also going to be coming as a, a, an option that's available to folks. So uh, having all this spelled out is really, really important. And as we get closer to the release, that'll be uh, part of that gets fixed and taken care of. Uh, there's also the topic of the com commercial support page that Gavin Morgan has proposed. Uh, it's got some feedback and we'd like to get some further discussion going on ideas, topics, or uh, maybe additional items that we can throw in there to help make it a better page. Um, I threw a quick note in here about the Blue Ocean status statement because uh, while it has been implemented in most of the Blue Ocean docs pages, uh, there are still a couple of places that it needs to be added. I found that one of the tutorial pages needed an additional statement added and uh, the Docker Hub page still needs to get uh, updated. And uh, finally, just uh, an idea of uh, change log entries coming from multiple repositories, which uh, Mark can tell us a little bit more about and uh, just what that is going to entail. So, uh, Let's go ahead and get started uh, with these action items. Uh, Mark, do you have anything that you'd like to share on the blog posts and mailing lists? Looks like you made it. The She Code Africa Contributes on result is the blog is posted. I'll put a link to it into that. And that's the only update. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, Vihan. How, would you like to take us through uh, the project and anything that you've been working on in the last week? Sure. Thanks a lot. Um, so since last week, um, the first thing that I did was move the tool to Java 11, as Mark mentioned in the last meet. So that reminded me, and I moved it to Java 11. So that is done. And the issue that we were facing in the steps, so we were losing out some plugins. Uh, so I, I found out the issue, and that was basically with the artifact that we were using, the new artifact. And that has been changed and released, and the new documentation is up to the mark. And uh, the main thing that has been done this week was uh, the good the good progress was about the project's main aim that was separating the documentation into new pages. So now I'm able to configure the params that I want into a config file, and it's automatically separating those particular sections out from the documentation. So if you would like, I can share my screen and show you some results that I've obtained. Sure thing, Beyond. Let me go ahead and stop my share and you can uh, take us on a little tour. So I'll go ahead and share. All right. I hope this is visible. All right. So um, I'll show you what I've done. I, I hope my VS code is also visible. Yep. Right. No problem there. Okay, so basically now what we can do is we can, uh, uh, the user can enter any any documentation maintainer could, men, uh, could mention these params in the config file and the process ASCII doc will iterate through this file and it will basically iterate through all the ASCII docs that are created from the steps generation process and it will look for those specific sections and it will uh, separate it out onto a new page and that will be fed onto a new location that is known as a params folder inside the steps pipeline steps and that params folder will basically contain that specific section of the ascii doc and uh, from every occurrence in the uh, main docs 
those particular sections will be removed now and there will be a hyperlink to these new pages that we have created so let me show you what i've done so i've currently put these three parameters inside uh, the config file so that is first is class get scm second is per force and third is the class multi scm so i'll show you the results that i've obtained not to work much on the ui of the links and all but uh, yeah so you click on that and now you see that the git scm documentation is lost and you can basically click on it and it will lead it onto a new page and which will now contain the git scm documentation the entire documentation that was coming under git scm and the beautiful thing about this is it has uh, this is this will happen everywhere the git scm documentation was coming out to be repeated so we have saved a lot of space that was uh, that was being occupied by this and i'll show you the example for this as well so multi scm was in itself another uh, class which had these parameters inside it again so it also had the get scm so we'll had to, we had to basically click through and now but now when we click on this it will lead us onto the same page so if you if you can see both these urls are the same so it is referencing to the same page so i have implemented that to every hierarchy possible um so this can be basically understood for other things also so for perforce also i've done the same thing and uh, everywhere the perforce uh, parameters are occurring you can see that the new page is uh, coming out to be uh, the one that we have separated out. So basically, uh, this will help us uh, manually configure the parts that we want to separate out because it's not required to separate out smaller smaller parameters such as this one. So uh, there is no actual use of uh, creating a new page for this. So the way that I could I thought was to uh, go for the manual configuration rather than the automated one. I also tried out the automated one and I also put a threshold in this. So now, for example, if someone mentions a vault SCM by mistake in the config file, it will first of all check whether the vault SCM in fact has that much documentation that it has to be separated. So the threshold number that I've set is 500 lines. And if it does not cross that, it will not separate it out. Um, and yeah, so basically there are some things that uh, the person will have to keep in mind while uh, entering values in the config file. And I'm going to document that once the pull request gets merged, uh, along with the pull request, maybe I'll, uh, I'll update the readme that goes along with the repository so that uh, the things are consistent. And yeah, so I'll basically work on refining the class, uh, bringing some more modularity and uh, improving the variable names, putting some comments. So uh, till next week, I will try to get this pull request merged. That's it from my side. Thanks a lot. So Vihan, thanks very much. Would you be willing to to keep sharing your screen for more questions or are you okay if we ask questions yeah sure 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 uh, I so, was too <laughs> to close it okay <laughs> yeah it looks great that's absolutely wonderful tell me more about the user user experience there it looked like it was two clicks to do hit the mm -hmm. the dash to convert the plus to dash mm -hmm. and then that gave me the link is there right. is do you have any picture of how could we get that to a single click so that when I click that plus it jumps to the page or is that is that infeasible or is there some other way to to reduce those two clicks to right. one right so basically I did that only before so it was uh, showing up as a blue link before mm -hmm. uh, the reason why I shifted to the click mechanism was it was looking inconsistent so basically opening up a page like this and seeing that separate blue thing sitting right there uh, I'm not sure which one looks better. And I, I was going to ask that in the next talks of us about the UI part. So I didn't focus much on that, but uh, okay. I felt that it was looking, slightly looking off uh, if we have a blue link sitting there rather than uh, having, so user whoever wants to see the multi SCM will always, obviously press on this and they'll see, oh, there's a link over here. And then they can basically click and go on. So yeah, I'm not like decided which one to go with, but yeah, maybe for the next talks of us, that be one of the agendas. Okay, thank you. I, I was just trying to understand. So, so what you've what you've done, it looks like, is deduplicated so that get SCM instead of being replicated multiple times with all of the content it's got, is now in mm -hmm. a single location, and right. yet their navigation still they click that plus sign and it now gives them one one more click and they have the the page. Right. So this is basically applicable for every step. So I'll show you one more example, the, the big one, pipeline Ruby libraries. So it basically this itself has around three to two to three occurrences of Git SCM. 
and once we configure it properly, a lot of content from this page. So as you can see, the loading time is already slightly reduced from what it was before uh, the JavaScript acting time. So I'll show you an example from SCM. And uh, again, if we go ahead and click, yeah, this is the link that we want to see. So yeah, again, the same page. So basically, uh, the way I'm doing it right now is not very efficient, I would say. But it's not taking a lot of time. So I was surprised by how fast this was happening. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm for every keyword that we have entered in this file, I'm iterating through all the ASCII docs and looking for the first occurrence of that particular uh, uh, particular parameter. And then I'm uh, once we are creating that uh, new ASCII doc, I'm not uh, creating it again. I'm not overwriting it. But I am iterating through all the ASCII docs and creating that duplicates minus the parameter that we have separated out. So uh, basically, uh, all the documents that we see here are the duplicates after running one loop. These are the duplicates of their uh, previous version. But for the ones that do not have get the same, for example, the exact same thing has been copied on. So this is not very efficient to do, but this was not taking a lot of time, actually. So for three parameters, the uh, running the entire build was uh, was taking around nine to 10 seconds. And that is not the bottleneck because we want to generate the documents first. So two ASCII doc is the bottleneck for our, my program. So the processing layer would not maybe slow down much of the building time. But I want to make it more efficient in the future. That's for sure. That that's impressive. So you have just proven once again that there are times when brute force search is the best way to do it. Excellent. So you did a you 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 really are truly iterating more more times than absolutely necessary. And you've shown who cares that you iterate more times than necessary. It's still faster than the than other parts of the conversion process. Well done. Thank you. Really, Thanks. Really a smart Great. way to reuse content. Yeah. Thank you very much, Vihan. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks a lot. And let me just go ahead and bring this back up. Okay, great. So thank you again, Leon. Appreciate all that work you're doing, and it looks great. Can't wait to see uh, what else you can come up with. Great. Okay, so uh, next on the list, uh, Jenkins 2.361.1 change log, upgrade guide, and blog posts. Uh, so this is something that Mark and I will be working on. Uh, Mark, did you have a, did you want to talk, talk about the point here? Yeah, so Fatih, Fatih has been made made it clear they want a uh, a higher level um, post, and so what I was envisioning is maybe this one should be the evolution of Jenkins blog post, and we talk about or the evolution of yeah the evolution of Jenkins, and we talk about a multi year view. Look, we switched from div based layout to table based layout. 18 months ago and then we switched here and we switched here and we or we we did java java 7 to 8 this many years ago then we did tables to divs then we did um this ui set of enhancements this ui so story after story and then conclude with and now the next release will do java 11 end of life for java 8 and and maybe that's the kind of story we want to tell there is a, across across a time period, I think that may be more engaging for their readers. Um, then again, it may be more than they want. If all they want is a, hey, new release of Jenkins is coming, we can do that easily. Yeah, I mean, if anything too, we could maybe post it to two separate blog posts or maybe split it up a little bit. So one is for the Java 11 changes and coming and then uh, Jenkins retrospective kind of topic, I guess. Um, but right. yeah, but either way, I think that would be, yeah, that's totally, yeah, yeah, I like that idea a lot. Great. Uh, and obviously there's the previous Java 11 blog post that Basil had created for, uh, the weekly release line. So that all that information is readily available, um, which will be a big help for me and all and working on this. Right. Great. Um, anything else on that one, Mark? Nothing from me. Okay, great. Uh, so the next item on the list is the search improvements for Jenkins.io. Uh, and uh, 
I know we've talked about it, Mark. I, I we've said we've discussed how the search results may not bring up the expected results. Uh, searching for upgrade doesn't show the upgrade guides, uh, and this is due to uh, Algolia needing to be upgraded. Um, currently, it's on the legacy scraper, and it needs to be updated to the newest format. It's inversion. Um, and if I recall, it's either yourself or Gavin that would need to do this. Is that still the case? Correct. Yeah. Got it. Um, and uh, is there any, any oh, you have the GitHub issue as well to track all of this progress so that's already made. Um, is there anything else that we should be aware of for this? Or uh, is it just something that's going to be coming down the pipeline at some point? Yeah, it's just work that work that somebody has to do who has permissions to the Algolia doc search facility. And, right. and those permissions are relatively limited. I think it's just Gavin and me. Okay, got it. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, and uh, so for the next LTS baseline, we discussed that it's going to be requiring Java 11. Uh, the weekly release at the end of June already requires Java 11 and has dropped Java 8 support. So now this will be mirroring that. Uh, something I'll also need to do is uh, make sure to update the uh, existing Blue uh, Jenkins documentation so that there isn't a uh, discrepancy for the weekly versus the LTS. So. Uh, that's something I'll need to update, but that'll be a simple removal. Um, the upgrade guide and change log are going to get started uh, within the next couple hours by myself and Mark, either in this meeting or uh, after the fact. So uh, that will have progress made, and we will be able to continue working on that as uh, we approach the release date. The commercial support page proposal that was uh, submitted by Gavin Mogan. Uh, still looking for ideas, discussions, feedback on this. Uh, if you feel strongly in any way, shape, or form about support, making a support page, or being able to reach support, uh, any ideas are welcome here. And you know, this is something that we want to improve and make it a lot easier for folks to be able to reach support vendors that we work with, um, whether it's support like vendor support or commercial vendors. Uh, it, Regardless, we want to be able to have just really helpful information available to the Jenkins community. Uh, and this is one of the best ways that we can go about doing that uh, for that. Um, we do need some more information from the vendors themselves so that we can provide uh, a better visualization for that, what kind of offerings they have, uh, their location, things like that, so that we can make sure people are getting the most out of this site. Um, and uh, yeah, go ahead, Mark, did you want to? I was just going to have you open up that page as a prototype, but there's no no real compelling thing. It's it's been a a week or so since the last time that Gavin mm -hmm. had time with it. He he did discuss it today in advocacy and outreach, and so he's oh, still interested in it, and that's mm -hmm. a good sign. But Definitely. but it's unchanged from the last time we showed it. Okay, uh, I was just going to try and find it to. Putting it up here on the page. Very top of the page, I think. Or, yeah, there it is. Oh, Great. Oh, okay. No, yeah, so that one. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, so um, it's a really rough idea right now, but something like this where we have those times that are available where offerings, they have community involvement, which is great. So you can see what plugins they work with and the community members that are part of that. Group. So that's actually a, that's even more than the was there last time I saw it. So that's awesome. Well, and if you'll click the back link up at the top left, mm -hmm. uh, no, top left of the page. So oh. there we go. Yes. So so here we've got a concept, and it might be Cloud Bees and Red Hat. It might include um, one or more additional vendors that are doing commercial products based on. Uh, Jenkins or doing support for Jenkins at this level and then you click through one of the requests that I had was hey give us a give us a way to make the support thing a link and so mm -hmm. here he's done a support link and and that one won't help you you have to go to Cloudbees yeah. the Cloudbees example page because there I, I put a real link in and yep. those kind of things where okay how do i connect with them to if i want to pay them money in order to help me mm -hmm. and then the direct page just to get to home base right exactly 
and and the, the then the questions on hey what else should be in this is still a an open discussion right so yeah so uh yeah, based on all that again any uh, feedback is welcome here uh the link is in the agenda for this idea uh and i can post it in the gitter channel if anyone else would love to check in on it or just uh read through you uh, you don't have to make suggestions you can just find out what's talk being discussed okay Okay, uh, yeah, uh, the, so the Blue Ocean status statement is something that came up uh, earlier this week, end of last week. We've added it to more pages and places since it was missing from uh, locations such as the actual Blue Ocean plugin page itself. Um, the Docker Hub page needs uh, a status update added uh, for the Blue Ocean container. It's a different process of updating though, and uh, we need to make sure we have the right permissions and ability to go ahead and update that. Uh, before we can make that update. Uh, and then something that I noticed when I was looking through is that a couple of the tutorial pages don't have the status statement on there. So I'll be adding that later this week, early next week to make sure that everything is aligned. Uh, Mark, did you want to touch base on the chain log entries or? Uh, oh, sorry. So, okay. oh, oh yes, I, I haven't posted that yet. That's another action item for me. Okay. Yeah, so just the fact that there are multiple repositories where anything could be coming in for the change logs for the releases, making sure that it's a little bit more consolidated or streamlined to prevent uh, any kind of missteps or miscommunications or whatnot. Right. Okay. Great. And then uh, next week, Mark is going to be on vacation, so he will not be joining us for the meeting. Uh, I'll still be here, so we will still have the meeting. And, uh, going to check in with Damien to see if he can host it for us. Well, we need to, well, I guess what I'm raising is we need somebody. I'm not sure that we've got enough time to get you permission to be given the access to the Zoom account. Mm -hmm. And so we need somebody who already has it. We know that Damien has it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure that Alyssa Tong has it as another possibility. Yeah. Um, and so it's if you're okay with it, Kevin, can you negotiate with one of them to see if you can get some help from them to to do yeah. it yeah of course um yeah that's not a problem at all and i know Alyssa helped us host one of the meetings when you were uh, out of office um, oh, a few weeks okay. ago so, so she was yeah she was available to do so and this is much closer to her time zone than to than to damien's so that's great okay yeah so then uh i'll check with Alyssa about that um and yeah that way we can have a host and everything and i'll still be here available for the meeting so it will still happen um, but yeah, we'll just have to have someone helping us out there. So, all right. Great. So, uh, we've gotten through the agenda and action items. Is there anything else that we'd like to touch base on, add to the agenda, make comments about? Um, and then, Nothing uh, for Mark, me. Okay. And Mark and I will uh, start talking about and working on the change log upgrade guide to 3611. Uh, on our own, separately from this. So uh, next time we'll be able to share some further information about that. Anyone else? Or does it feel like we've covered everything? Is there going to be a docs project for Hacktoberfest this year? Do you have anything planned that's kind of more geared for writers or? Good, good question. Uh, maybe we ought to put it as a topic on the agenda here because there's certainly are things that we can encourage writers to, but we'll need to do some prep work if we want writers to be involved in Hacktoberfest. It's a good idea. I, I think we might have a couple CI writers who are interested, so I just want to mention it. I'd like to yeah. participate again too. Yeah, good suggestion. So let's put it on a on a topic for future and be sure that we give some thought. Definitely, it's a great idea. Great. Thanks, Dan. So let's, maybe I can capture some quick ideas. So for instance, we have uh, many places that need to convert docs from Wiki to GitHub, uh, to Markdown. And, and that we're still continuing. We've got lots and lots of work to do there. The report is available. Uh, we just need to highlight, we've taught people in past years how to do that. Mm -hmm. It's an, an easy one to teach again, hey, this is how you make that conversion. Yeah, that's a um, good idea. 
others there is the well there are i'm not sure we are we're as successful in the past with wiki page conversions because we've still got a number of them that are sitting because it requires a level of expertise that most of these new contributors don't have so i would say intentionally exclude wiki page conversion from hacktoberfest because it's not been successful in the past uh, too much knowledge required. What what when I say wiki page conversion, what I mean is um, documentation wiki pages. So these were pages that talked about core Jenkins concepts or important things that you would do or not do. And many of them are by now five or six years old and so out of date and so so, so filled with errors that a person attempting to convert them will bring the errors forward and not realize it. And then it's up to the reviewers. All of a sudden the reviewers are now doing all the work of doing the port. It's it's not enough of a help for us. Whereas yeah. plug-in documentation conversion is a much narrower task. And as a narrower task, it's more likely to be successful. Yeah. I was thinking too, Mark, um, I know that I had taken over for the She Code Africa, the screenshot updates in a lot of areas. Uh, did the were we able to finish the, like the inclusive naming updates and that sort of stuff? I know um, I've still found a couple areas where like the screenshots for those could be updated. But um, I was talking to Dan about uh, some other items recently that maybe we can uh, discuss further and add to the list of what should be changed. So yeah, the the problem for me with inclusive naming updates is it needs it needs a level of technical discretion that many of these Hacktoberfest contributors don't have there right. if we tell them you can convert everything except java symbols they mm -hmm. will still inadvertently convert java symbols we had that with the contributathon people they were saying oh look there's here's this java source code i need to convert the word master to controller and what that did was break the api yeah. right and so they they it was actually a net negative there so i'd much rather we focus on, on just the, at least right now, my mental model is just the, the wiki to markdown conversion for plugins is already, there, there are still 800 plugins that need conversion. So there's no lack of work to be done there. And, and some of those plugins that need conversion have as many as 10 or 20,000 installations. So it's not that they are unpopular plugins either. They are, it, you get to 800 and I think you've still got over a thousand installations on most of those plugins. Gotcha. Yeah, it sounds like a good candidate to me. Yeah, definitely. Good. Any, any others? Can't think of anything right now, Mark, but I'm sure something will come up as we continue working on this stuff. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, I think that covers everything for today. Uh, we'll go ahead and stop the recording and it will be available.